check out this auto ranging ohm meter built and coded from scratch using an Arduino, eight precision resistors, a multiplexer, and an OLED display. It can measure resistance from zero ohms all the way up to one giga ohm with fairly high accuracy. We have provided all the code, a parts list, and a schematic diagram that we've linked to in the description so you can easily build this on your own as well. We have our own Steve Stephanidis to thank for building this project. He is one of Programming Electronics Academy's technical writers. Check out this project build and watch me test it against an off-the-shelf multimeter I picked up from Amazon. Stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. All right, so let's go ahead and build this thing at 10x speed. I started with a breadboard, I set up the power rails, and added the multiplexer chip. It's a MAX 4617 Charlie Papa Echo high speed low voltage CMOS 8 to 1 analog multiplexer. Man, that is a mouthful. You know, we can just say MUX for short. Basically, a MUX allows you to select one of many different signals. Since this is an 8 channel MUX, we are able to choose between 8 different signals. That's where those eight precision resistors come in. We attach different resistors to each channel of the MUX. In the code, we'll be selecting the different channels one by one and using analog read to determine the voltage, which we can then use to determine the unknown resistance with our ohm meter. Now, if you've got no idea what analog read is, or even the idea of writing code to select different signals seems kind of like foreign to you, then make sure to check out the training at Programming Electronics Academy. Not only will you learn how to code, but you'll learn how to actually control electronics stuff. It's pretty cool. Okay, enough about that. The next thing I add is an SPI OLED display, which will be used to display the resistance value that we measure with the ohm meter. I also add a 220 microfarad 16 volt electrolytic capacitor for filtering out noise in the five volt VCC line. I then start making the connections between the Arduino and the OLED display and the breadboard and the power and ground lines. Then I start making connections between the MUX and the Arduino. You can see this gets really busy pretty quick. Tons of wires everywhere. Now, if you use solid core jumper wire, you can definitely make it look cleaner. And you don't have to use a big old Arduino Uno. You can use a smaller form factor Arduino, like a Pro Micro or a Pro Mini but it really does start to feel like a lot of connections to keep up with. And I was referring to the MUX data sheet and the schematic that we've provided quite a bit to make sure I was getting the correct pins. And one thing that helped was having everything laid out ahead of time. And that's pretty much it for the build. It goes together really quick. Once you upload the code, you're ready to start measuring some resistance. And just a reminder, a link to the code is provided in the description. So now let's go ahead and compare our own meter here with an off the shelf Amazon multimeter. But first, a word from our sponsor. Do you need a printed circuit board design software to move your prototype to the next level? All Team Designer is a great choice for designing PCBs, sharing your design with team members, and even getting your design manufactured. What really kind of blows me away about this software is that even though it's a super powerful tool, at the same time, it's really intuitive to use. They've got helpful video tutorials built right into the software so you can kickstart your learning process and actually get something made. Right now, you can get a free trial to Altium Designer with our link in the description. That's right, you can test drive this super powerful software with a free trial. Just check out the link in the description. All right, here we go. We are gonna do a showdown between cheap Amazon multimeter and Arduino meter. Let's see who comes out on top. All right. We are gonna start with a 39 ohm resistor. I've got that right here. Now, this cheap multimeter, it's not auto ranging, so I have to select it. And since we're doing a 39 ohm, I'm going to 200 ohms here, so I should be able to measure up to 200 ohms with this setting right here. So let's do this. All right. And what do we get? 38.6 for this multimeter. All right, let's try the Arduino meter. So I've got this, this is where we hook up the leads. Go ahead and one side in here, the other side in here. Look at that, 38.8, sweet. All right, pretty close. I'm gonna go to a 1.8 kilo ohm right here. 
Now I need to change the adjustment here. I'm going to go to 2K. So now I should be able to measure up to 2K. Since this is 1.8K, I should be okay. Sometimes this cheap multimeter, though, gives me trouble. We'll see how it goes. All right, 1.768. Let's try the Arduino meter. 1.75. Man, it's pretty good. All right. Now let's go to a, uh, let's try a 15K, 15K resistor. Oh my gosh, do I, oh, I got to change this again. Man, these, these selector ohm meters, so lame. It takes so much work. I had to move it from there all the way over to here to get to 20K. Whatever. All right, let me measure it. Man, if I can find the other probe, here we go. Okay. 14.96. All right, 14.97. It's pretty good. Again, you know, these resistors we're testing, they're not precision resistors that we're testing. So they've got a tolerance, so they're not going to be, you know, exactly 15K. That's what we're trying to discover here. What are they actually? So let's see what the Arduino meter has to say about this one. 14.9. Wow. Getting pretty darn close. All right, let's try a... 2.2 mega ohm. All right, so I think 2.2. So we got a, a red, that's two. Another red is a two. And then it's got like a green. I think that's a green. Uh, don't hold me to that. I know it's 2.2 because I got a little chart that with all these next to them, but let's see here. All right, oh man. Okay, so this is 2.2 mega ohm. I got to go all the way up to 20 mega ohm right here. And then let's see what we get. All right, 2.19 mega ohm. Yeah, we're getting a little, you know, kind of jumped around a little bit. All right, let's see what Arduino meter says. Look at that, 2.1, man, 2.2 mega ohms. Wow, that's pretty cool. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. All right, one last one here. We're gonna go at 10 mega ohms. 10 mega ohms. So I should be able to keep this setting because I can go up to 20 meg. So let's see what the cheap Amazon one says. It's kind of jumping around. It's not because I'm, well, maybe I am shaking. All right. All right. Uh, that's the shakes. Oh, everybody gets the shakes every once in a while, right? All right. Down to like 9.8. 9.97, 9.78 mega ohms, right around there. Okay, let's see what the Arduino meter says. 9.79, oh, a little jumpy there. All right, see, we get the shakes here too. Okay, hey, this is a pretty good matchup. You can see that the Arduino meter does a pretty darn good job. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the results. Okay, so how does this thing actually work? Well, in this lesson, we're not gonna dive into a bunch of the theory, but here's the basics. You may have heard this thing called Ohm's Law. I think it was discovered by a monk, you know, like Ohm. Anyway, if you create a voltage divider circuit like this one, where RF is the reference resistor, whose value is known, that's like what we determine, and RX is the resistance under test, that's like the unknown resistance that we're trying to determine. VCC is the voltage applied to the circuit, and Vx is the voltage measured at that junction, then by Ohm's law, we can create this voltage divider equation, where if we solve by Vx, that is, if we can figure out what the voltage is at Vx, then that will allow us to determine the unknown Rx resistance value. So how the heck are we gonna measure the voltage at Vx? Well, lucky for us, the Arduino has an analog to digital converter that's built right in and we can use it to measure the voltage of Vx. The issue becomes though, is that the error of the measurement grows as the difference between our reference resistor and the unknown resistance value grows. So the bigger that difference, the greater the error. So what we need to do is pick a reference resistor as close to the unknown resistance value as possible. But wait a second, we have no idea what the unknown resistance value is. So how can we possibly know which reference resistor to choose? 
Well, this is where the MUX and the eight precision resistors come in. In our code, we make eight separate measurements of VX switching between each of the different reference resistors. Then we cherry pick from that list the measurement which shows the reference resistor being closest to the unknown resistance. Now, it's a little more detailed than that, but really not too much. If you'd like us to dive further into the theory, the operation, the code of this project, just let us know in the comments. Maybe we can make some more videos about it. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. If you want to build this project for yourself, check out the description for the links to all the parts required, the code, and a schematic. If you want to learn how to code real stuff like a project like this, check out the Programming Electronics Academy membership program in the description below. And before you go, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to get updates when we drop new videos. And hey, you see this picture at the end? Send us a photo of you working on your Arduino project at bench at programmingelectronics.com, and you might just see a rendition of you and your bench right here. Thanks, and have a great one. Bye.